previously on Friday Night Titans. Great to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, but oh. what is happening with the stars? I have no idea right now. Things are things are not right. Roxy yeah, tell is, me about I, it. What she did to Janine is just is just not okay. It's totally not cool. And Chantru? I know. I don't know where this came from. You and I together, we could we could help yes. Roxy get back yes. to yeah. This right? is the plan. If we can just convince her to take Chaos Theory back, yes. then we can get Janine back in yeah. and we can we can get yeah. the stars back We're, together. Yeah. So I'll okay. talk to Roxy. Meet me back here, and when you do, big happy family. Back together, yes. we'll hug it out. That's all I want. That's all I want. Okay, great. Great. So I knew I could count on you. Thanks, yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You've got this loser quality to you. And worse than that, you haven't listened to me. Not at all. Because as I've been telling you, don't trust anyone. Nick. Nick. What are you doing? Jacoby, I think you should leave. What? Who even is this guy? Just get him out of here. Get out. Uh, Mr. Irwin would like you to leave his office immediately. So, bye. Roxy, it's... You heard them. Leave. Okay. I can do some for me. Um, Mr. Riley? Uh, Mr. Riley, I would look. Please, I'm, I'm I'm so sorry to bother you, but I just I, I really need a match. I just I, I'm really passionate about it. After, 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 after. Now let's talk singles. I know that you want to go for a third championship, which would be your singles. If you do, you will have to face Paige for Betty to start your path back into singles. Think about it again. Get back in touch. Um, but, That's it. That's my path. You're looking sharp, Jim. Well, thank you, but that's paid for Brett. Oh. The chick that be Bateman? Oh, I know her. Ken, this is that's... an unscheduled appearance yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Boston badass Paige for Betty and yeah. Adam Witt. I think I gotta play another dinosaur. Mike? The killer Konowski. Oh, oh my. Instead of uh, uh, answering questions about uh, things for eight-year-olds, maybe you want to play an adult in adult trivia about adult things. Let's see how good you are at that, instead of talking about stuff that eight-year-olds would watch on the kitchen floor, okay? All right. Yeah. That's so, Wow. Sounded dirty, Ken. We'll see you then, Kalinowski. Because the first time I sent it, I feel like it looked like that. But then, like, I really thought about it, so it's like, I'm going to call him that forever now. <laughs> you got to do it to his face during a match. Yeah. Oh, man. That was fun. Dude, that I mean... That was a good time. It was always fun. And I feel like... When you called him Midnight Mass! <laughs> it's funny because it's a show. That's why it's funny. Oh, man. I uh, I can't man, even I, I can't get away with saying lines like that, but you always could, man. It was so good to have you back. I mean, that's why we're good. That's why team action is yeah. great. I know. I'm 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 stoked it's back. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, I, you saw the chat. Everyone was losing their minds. They were going nuts. Yeah, and rightfully so. Yeah, rightfully so. We can't keep doing that. What? Just being <laughs> just be in action. We we've done it for for half a decade, and. You, you know how it feels when you walk out of that stage and everyone hates you? I mean, yeah, but like I always kind of, you carry a lot of, you carry the load. It's a lot to carry, man. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like, over the last couple of years, I have loved being on the desk. Mm -hmm. I have loved this transition over the last two years. And I think it's made me a better person. I think it's made the league better. Not because I'm on the desk, but because I think it's kind of, gone away from what team action used to be, which don't get me wrong. I love it, but we're getting old, dude. I, you saw me jump over that desk. My back still hurts. Okay. I'm not the young 20 year old I was when we started. I mean, I just feel like people loved it and it was so fun. I mean, I was, the, I feel like I'm at my best almost when we're doing that. Right? Like, yeah, no, no, I, I think I am too, but you can't do it forever, man. I mean, look, Rat Radis and Lomas, we needed to prove something to them. We needed to let them know, look, you're the you're the changing of the guard. You guys are going to do what Team Action used to do. Look, try it against us, right? And we saw what happened. It was an embarrassment for, for them. Yeah. But we can't do that forever. I can't do that forever. I like being on the desk. Do you remember when we joined this league? 
Yeah, of course. It's like five. What do we say? I just want to play matches. Yeah. I don't care about winning. I don't care about losing. I just want to be in matches. And guess who gave us a shot? K did, right? For yeah. all the things that he's done right or wrong in our careers as team action, he at least gave us shots. Yeah, for sure. You're a champion. You're a vet. People look up to you. You need to, you need to give them an opportunity. You need to push up the young talent in the league. We can't do this forever. It's, it's not the same, man. The, the guys that we used to go head to head with the most, they're not around as much. And honestly, I don't, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I don't hate Mike Kalinowski anymore. I, I don't. Interesting. So, you, yes. So you, I mean, even though we just won and it was great, it was fun, and like, I'm going to remember, you think I shouldn't do that? I mean, we can do that, but we are not going to continue going on this path. You're saying team action's done. It was a one-off. You knew that. I told, I, that literally in the text. I know. I just thought that, you know, <laughs> yeah, your first I perfect know. round. I know. I know. But I can't do that again. <laughs> I don't want to try to do that again. Help them out. Build the den. Become a champion. Get both those belts. Get on Rushmore. And the only way you can do that is by building other people up around you. Right? You can't do it on your own. We've tried to do that for too long. We would get so close. Get right. those belts. Okay. Get both of them. I hear you. I, I appreciate you saying that. You know I love you, right? Yeah. Action for life, baby. Where's the belts? Where's the belts? Yeah. It's the Schmodown, the world championship of movie trivia. Come on, come on, to show the lifetime. The price of admission is not existent. We got one hell of a lineup tonight, folks. We're taking names and putting to shame. Everyone that cares. This is Friday Night Titans. Okay, do I, do I want the donut or do I want the fruit? <laughs> they both just look so good. I mean, I don't know which one I want. I, 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 that donut. I think that donut's pretty good. Hey, okay. kid. Oh, hi, Mr. Riley. Hi. Hi. How, how, how are you doing? So you really want a match, huh? Oh, oh boy, yeah. Do I? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you want to win a match, huh? Yeah, and then win that another match, yeah. then win another match, then maybe get close enough for a title shot, you win that thing, you win that big shiny belt, you put it right here, right? You walk around, maybe for a month or so, and then they take it away from you, and they stomp it on the ground, just like your heart. It was right here beating at one point, but now it's gone, and then when you meet up with a teammate, <laughs> maybe you win a few, maybe three or four, and then they take off, and you're left alone, reeling trimming leaves you really want that yeah yes yes i do absolutely come with me oh. no donut i'm just trying to tell you to remember they both went to jail true you know so there, there's clearly a connection there so that's the part <clears throat> that i think a lot of people don't realize yes. if you just look at it just by the pure nature of them both going to prison at some point mm -hmm. they're clearly they are related stories hey, they're related stories hey, look, hey, look at this guy from here what's up boy how you Riley. doing, how you doing? You, man actually how are you hi look at that shirt yes i love that shirt Did you oh, get, thank nice. you where'd you get that shirt that's beautiful now are you excited for the uh the, they just announced the sequel did they? Yeah. Okay. It'll just do. Brad Pitt is producing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yo, he's been killing it, man. He does a good job producing, so it's... I have high hopes. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Listen. Yo. So this young man, Joey, here. Jacoby. Jacoby. Yeah, no, he was on a, a random hypothesis, right? Chaos yeah. theory. Close enough. Well, what about it? Yeah, well, he's, uh... 
He's looking for a match. He's looking for a match. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, Klee, I know you're looking for something. And I thought, right. you know, why not? Old school, kind of have fun, get in there, get dirty. Right? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? A match. I, I like it, Klee. What you think? Sure. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Nice, seems like a nice kid. Let's do it. He's a nice yeah. kid. All right. Yeah. Hey, Riley, any time, brother. Yeah? I'll see you out there. I let's love do it. it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah. Klee, awesome. let's do it. Yeah. Uh, oh. Hey, oh, whoa, okay. Oh, sorry, so, yeah, simmer yeah, down, yeah. simmer down. Just okay. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we're going to finish our conversation. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Joey, come on. So seriously, I'm telling you, Empire is a requel to Hustle and Flow. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. It's another edition of Friday Night Titans. I am here with the Titanic, Andrew Guy. You're not a disaster, though. I am merely Mark Baby Carousels. <laughs> the headlining match is one that's been brewing for a while. Yeah. Mike the Killer Kownowski taking on the Boston Badass Paige for Betty. A lot of backstory there, Andrew, as there is in our undercard matchup. Sweet Tea, Clee Wiggins is taking on the deal breaker, Jacoby Bancroft. Now, Sweet Tea, Clee Wiggins has moved from one faction. She was in uh, the corruption people, and now she is with the swag people. Yes. But that was pretty harmonious. Yeah, I as mean, far that's as Jacoby Bancroft. Kind of how things go usually when you get traded, a manager picks you up, drops you. But on the other <laughs> side of it with Jacoby Bancroft, a yep. little bit more drama going on. No surprise there when you talk about the rock stars going there, turning their backs, don't trust anybody. <laughs> Once again, Jacoby gets the short end of this stick, goes to his old teammate, Nick Harley, says, hey man, can you help me out? He turns his back on him as well. So what does he do? What on earth do you do in this moment? Well, you go back to a legend. You go back to someone who has tried to trude an old Yodi winner. Mark Yodi <laughs> Riley is back. That's right. I, I, I thought he uh, thought he disappeared like Yoda himself in Return of the Jedi, but now he has reappeared like Luke on some island somewhere hanging out with frog nuns, but he seems to have the trust of Jacoby. And so today, I, he's going to be the proxy manager. He's not yeah. officially the manager. Right. We don't have a faction for Jacoby yet, but he at least has someone coaching him through the free rounds of trivia he's about to have. Yeah, and what better person to do it than Mark Riley? Now, like you said, we don't know if we'll get the joys of seeing him back competing in the ring, but you talk about someone that is made to be a manager. This guy has been around since day one. There is not a better person that knows the ins and the outs of the gamesmanship that is the movie trivia showdown. Oh, it's going to be good. You got a legend of the game returning. You have the deal breaker. You have sweet tea. Those are both things that I enjoy. Well, I, I, I don't actually like sweet I love tea either. Tea. Yeah, but are you a sweet tea guy? Uh, I don't. I like it unsweetened. I but like I like Clee Wiggins, so maybe it's like, uh, you know, 50-50 there. Well, we don't like deals being broken, which is why we go to the pit boss, who is our ring announcer today. Ken, take it away. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of our friends around the world, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. <laughs> it's Introducing first, for the record of one win and two defeats and one KO, representing Swag, and accompanied to the arena by her manager, Winston Marshall, Clee Sweet Tea! The crown Sweet Tea, and there it is, oh. Mr. Swag himself. Marshall and there's Clee Wiggins, and they have what appears to be a jug of what I hope is just sweet tea. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw Winston Marshall uh, concocting this in the bathroom. Granny uh, something. Of all, this is my granny sweet tea recipe. Don't y'all disrespect it. Guy don't get none. He apparently don't like sweet tea. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't like. I didn't tea. know I was offered any, and now I wish that I had not said anything. Well, yeah. as long as it's not Granny's yeah, peach tea from bit. Batman v Superman. Okay. There it goes. There Winston pouring yeah. some into the styrofoam cup of Clee Wiggins as she makes her way over to the desk. A lot of fans excited to see Clee in this new iteration of swag. And with her joining the unit, prospects are looking good. Yeah, Clee Wiggins, a knockout player. She's won and lost, won and lost by TKOs, but she's actually been in the studio before. Maybe something that she can hold over her competitor who is new to a space like this. Yeah, we're also about to meet him. And her opponent. With a record of one win and two defeats. Led to the arena by movie trivia showdown legend and former two time movie trivia showdown champion of the world, Mark Yoni Riley. 
This is the Deal Breaker, Jacoby! And you know there's going to be a huge applause for Jacoby coming to the ring, but is it for him or is it for the legend, Mark Riley? It feels like it's for the guy with the leather jacket and the Superman shirt, but look at how tall Jacoby is. It's a drink of water right there, folks. That is 12 ounces of hydration. Well, Mark Riley does wear his five foot five well, but Jacoby Bancroft <laughs> does really split the difference there. And Mark Riley making his way to the ring very, very comfortable, as you can see, leading this young star to the ring. Jacoby Bancroft started his career off very strong with the win over yeah. Jacob London, but then he ran into Griffey Newman and Brendan Meyer, two of the best there is in the MTS. That's right, the deal breaker looking to make his mark here in the Schmodown season nine. It is reboot, and we're rebooting with at least one new faction. We'll see what happens with this situation as our competitors are now set at at their positions, we get into the rules of round number one. Ten questions spanning the entire movie trivia universe. You get 15 seconds per response. A correct answer will earn you one point. If either competitor needs more time to answer a question, you can ask us for one of your three repeats, but you only have three repeats <laughs> to use for the entire three-round match. Clee Sweet T. Wiggins, are you ready to play? I am ready to play. Yeah! All right. And <laughs> Jacoby, the deal breaker, Bancroft. Will Mark Riley be managing you today? Yes, he will be. All right. Yeah! And uh, you're ready to go, sir? How do you feel? I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. He's excited, young buck. All right, all right. We're ready. We're going to be fine. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of our friends around the world, let's get ready to Shmoda. All right, all right, here we go. Sweet tea, deal breaker. The managers don't want to leave. Look, it's like a new person you're coaching. They're very excited. You can you can step away from the hey, desk now, man. Winner gets the second half of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. oh, he's yeah. leaving the jug up there. All right. I'd love to see Sweet Tea take a big pull <laughs> off that every time she gets a question right. But this is a family show, so here we go. Ten questions in the realm. Realm, excuse me. Round number one, coming from the entire realm of the movie universe, starting with fantasy sci-fi. What popular science fiction action franchise features performances from Josh Brolin, Tony Shalhoub, Tommy Lee Jones, and Tessa Thompson? Great seeing uh, Riley back around the show. I know. You, just, you always love seeing that guy around. He's got that special parking spot out front. That, yeah, he has a parking spot. He does. Five, he does. Four. I do not. Three. I don't either. Two. One. I'm on the street. Two hour parking. Pens down. Let's go to Clee Wiggins first. Men in Black. black Here they black. come. That is correct for a point. How about you go be Bancroft? The Men in Black franchise. There it is. He yeah. even wrote franchise. Yeah. I can't even spell it. That's the Riley tutelage right there. We move on to question number two as the match is tied at one. And the category is black cinema with the question. What 1992 crime thriller features performances from Omar Epps, Tupac Shakur, Samuel L. Jackson, and Queen Latifah? I was going to ask on the first question who you go and get a drink with, but I feel like it's a much better group of people here on the second this question. This second question yeah, has seems the more a lot fun cooler. I don't really want to hang out with Tommy Lee Jones, even though I like it. Seems him. gruff. Yeah. But Tessa Thompson? Definitely. I would enjoy a hang. Five, four, three, two. One. Look at the game faces. Deal breaker. You go first. Juice. Juice is correct. Does Clee have it? Juice. Yes, Clee yeah, has right. it. Tied it too. <laughs> right, girl. So far, Come doing great now. here in Come our on, studio. No. Question got number juice three. Now, though. Coming from the category <laughs> of new releases while Winston refills his beverage. <laughs> <laughs> it only took him two questions before he needed a refill. It's impressive. New releases. Who was nominated for an Academy Award for their performance as Jonathan Larson in the 2021 musical biopic Tick, Tick, Boom? Biopic. You know, I thought that was an action movie. Really? Well, from the title, you would it think seems so. like a Stathamer. You know? <laughs> yeah. Tick, that tick, would have been boom. a very different movie. Five, four. I like rent. Three. <laughs> 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 well, yours might be better than Harloff's. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Ben's down. Let's go to Clee Wiggins. Andrew Garfield. He's one of those spider people, does. Andrew Garfield. Jacoby have it. He does it. It is three to three. As we head on to your next category here in round number one, and that is a decade. The decade being the 1990. Mm. Good, good time to be alive. You missed a really fun year. Ten of them, actually. Here's your question. What 1997 comedy starring Jim Carrey had the tagline, Trust Me, and featured supporting performances from Maura Tierney, Carrie Elways, and Jennifer Tilly? 
Are you an Elways or a Yules? Just going to say, so I'm an Elways person. I want it to be Elways. Is it Yules? I bet it is, but uh, I'm never saying it. I'm never going to say it either. Yeah, sorry. John Elways too popular. We know you're watching. We're sorry. Four, three. He was in the crush. Remember that one? Two. I don't. One. Pence down. Let's go to Cleet Wiggins. Liar, liar. He is correct. Jacoby Bancroft. Yeah. Liar, liar. Nailed it. Oh, wow, they both got the comma in there, too. Really impressive <laughs> stuff here. <laughs> Halfway through round number one, neither of our competitors have missed yet. And as you can see on the scoreboards, tied and three repeats available for both. Sequels and prequels is your category for question number five. Of the following actors, which does not appear in Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant? Danny McBride, Patrick Wilson, Catherine Waterston, or Guy Pierce? I don't hate hanging out with these people either. You know, I feel like Guy Pierce got a bad rap. I feel like he looks like a bad guy, but he's probably really cool. <laughs> I think if you look evil, you have to be nicer I, in real you life. You really do. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down. Let's go to the deal breaker. I said Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson is correct. Does Clee have it? I said Guy Pierce. Oh, and our first miss of the day is courtesy of Sweetie. So it's five to four. Deal Breaker currently enjoying a one point lead. So we're going to careen into your next category, that being mysteries and thrillers. And the question for a point Millie Bobby Brown plays the younger sibling of Henry Cavill's Sherlock Holmes in what? 2020 Netflix mystery film. Man, that Henry Cavill guy works a lot. He works out a lot. He, d he absolutely Guy does. has a gym membership. Takes off his shirt in that Man of Steel trailer, I have to admit. <laughs> it's it's a prep when he pumps the guns in the mission. Oh, Five, the gun cock? Four, three, two. Shout out to Whitney Seibel. One. I'm so happy the word gun was in front of that. Yep. Pens down. Let's go to <laughs> Clee Wiggins first. Enola Holmes. Enola Holmes is correct. Does Jacoby have the right first name? He Enola does. Holmes. Yes. There it is. Yes. All right. It's a good movie. I saw it. All right. Question number seven coming your way here from the category of spy films. Spy films. Who plays the lead role of Lorraine Broughton, a top-level MI6 field agent in the 2010s film Atomic Blonde? I'm going to be giving away too much information here, but uh, Enola Holmes, that might have been a Netflix and chill for old Mark Ellis back in 2020. Oh, really? Yeah, it was just me, but I was <laughs> relaxing. So I was watching the film. Gets really exciting halfway through. It does, yeah. But again, just me. Five, four, three, which somehow just made it worse. Two, one. <laughs> Your down. Poor neighbors. Let's go to the deal breaker. Charlie Theron? Is correct. And Glee oh. Wiggins. Charlie Theron. Got that one. It is. Let's go, girl. Great round one here. Like Seven to six. And we move on to your eighth question, which in the old days would be the final one. But we like y'all, so we got three more. This one is in the category of drama. And the question. David Ayelowo plays civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. And Tom Wilkinson plays President Lyndon B. Johnson in what 2014 historical drama directed by Ava DuVernay? Are we old enough to the point now where we ask each other who your favorite president <laughs> in U.S. history is? Well, yeah, but does it have to be somebody from our lifetime? No. Or can you go with, like, a, a Lincoln, a you Kennedy? You could go with LBJ. A Millard Fillmore. Did he, was he elected, or was he just running? Five. <laughs> three. Van Buren. The, sense two. the suspense does One. not stop. <laughs> down. Let's go to Sweet Tea Cleetwig. Selma. It is Selma. That is correct, yeah. and deal breaker. Selma. He wow. got that one, too. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. And two questions remain for the deal breaker and Sweet Tea. Their penultimate one is in what category? Famous actors and actresses. Which actress appears in the following films? The Sixth Sense, 2011's Fright Night, 2000's Shaft, and Hereditary. Do you see what, would we get lazy on the years? Uh, yeah, they just... We only got two. Oh, I, I, I guess mm. there's multiple. Couple remakes in the there. other ones. Yeah. Sorry, writers. It's the reason we're up here. I got jumpy. Repeat the question. That's first repeat for Sweet Tea. Category of famous actors and actresses. Which actress appears in the following films? The Sixth Sense, 2011's Fright Night, the 2000's Shaft, and Hereditary. All right. So we were talking about Henry Cavill. Mm -hmm. I give you one body part from Henry Cavill that you can have. I want his pecs. You want his back? I just, I'm telling you, they're, he's so wide. I would take his shoulders, but I already have them. Five, 
before. They literally cut the camera okay, away. My hammer fell as off as when I went to tap two. On the shoulder. One. Pens down. Pens down, Klee. Pens down. And we go mm. to Jacoby first. Tony Collette. Is correct. Did Klee have it? No. Oh, does not have it. And so it is nine to seven. It's a two point lead. But here is where it gets interesting. Jacoby Bancroft and Klee Wiggins each have one last question in round number one. If Bancroft hits it, he gets a bonus because he got a perfect round. We're not there yet. Where we are is your final category for one point, musicals. And here's your question. Boz Lerman directed Nicole Kidman, Ewan McGregor, and Jim Broadbent in what 2001 musical that was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards? Like musicals? Do you musicals guy? You know, I, I never walk into a musical like, oh, great, but five minutes later, swept up in a world of imagination. So Tick Tick Boom must have been a difference because you walk uh, in thinking it was an action movie. Well, yeah, so you were excited, and then it was that. a good musical. Still loved it. Though. I mean, heartwarming. What a good uh, night. Four and breaking to a certain extent. Three, two, one. Pens down, and let's go to Sweet Tea. Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge is correct, and she has eight points in round one. But Jacoby for a perfect round. Moulin Rouge. He got it. Wow. That is a big get here, Ellis. Now it's still only two points. He has to hit the bonus, yes. but that potential to go up by three going into round number two means you have one free answer, one free question in round two. And Jacoby, you can just simply answer this question, and Regal will be administering it. Clee, you can uh, enjoy a sip of sweet tea while Jacoby <laughs> fields this last query for your bonus question: Which film from Adam McKay? features supporting roles from Katherine Hahn, Seth Rogen, Adam Scott, and Richard Jenkins. Man, a lot of groups of cool people. Oh, yeah. Five, four, three, two. Anchorman. That is incorrect. We were looking for Step the Brothers. The funniest comedy Step of the Brothers. post-2000s era, yes. Step Brothers. But Jacoby Bancroft still, hell of a round one, 10 Absolutely. to eight. Both competitors playing admirably with their new managers, officially or unofficially. They're doing the work. And so now we head to round number two, which is the wheel round. Each player gets to spin at our lovely wheel. If you don't like what you spin at first, you do have one mulligan once you settle on a category. Five questions. Each one's worth two points, unless you need the aid of multiple choice. Keep in mind, stealing is available in round number two. So Jacoby Bancroft, the deal breaker, and some guy he found off the street as his coach, you had the decision to make. Would you like to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? I think Mark Riley's been in this situation once or twice. A couple times, Mr. Ellis. Uh, we're going to defer. Okay, so it's going to be up to Sweet Tea and her manager, Winston okay. Marshall. So a little head over. interesting note here on Sweet Tea is that of her last two singles cool. matches, she spun opponent choice twice. So, I mean, those could be Ws that she's looking at, having a tough time getting through this wheel. That's right. Well, opponent's choice is on the wheel, it but is. it's hidden under a wild card. So one of those wild cards is opponents, one is spinners, and one is just a zany category that Cleet could elect to take if she hits it right off the bat. At your ready, Sweet Tea. Mm. There's the it's spin. Good spin. It's a good spin. Jennifer Aniston, smart water fan. Would you like to keep it or spin again? That Rachel cut in 96 was everywhere. Everybody oh. wanted Jennifer Aniston's haircut. Crazy, yeah, and, and he uh, still do. I've got to say, when I first saw Horrible Bosses, it really messed with my yeah. mind as a child. Because she was so un like She was so un like yeah. I didn't really know how to deal with it. But honestly, she was incredible. She's more of a Phoebe. It's Phoebe <laughs> or Slash. Phoebe Monica. All right, Maybe we need a decision here. What do you want to do? Uh, we'll keep it. They're going to okay. keep Jennifer Aniston. All right. So, Sweet Tea, you have five questions coming your way in the category of Jennifer Aniston. You have two of your repeats. Remember, if you check down to multiple choice, it will be worth one, and you can always hear back the options for multiple choice. Your first question What 1993 horror comedy? marks Jennifer Aniston's first official credited feature film debut. Leprechaun. Warwick Davis would be so proud yeah. right now. Give her two points, <laughs> and she has tied things up already here in round number two. We get to question number two. What MCU actor co-stars opposite Jennifer Aniston in 1998's The Object of My Affection? Oh, um... Mark Ruffalo? That is incorrect. And for a two-point steal, the deal breaker, what 
MCU actor co-stars opposite Jennifer Aniston in 1998's The Object of My Affection. Jennifer Aniston and this is an actor. I think it was uh, Robert Downey Jr. Ellis, that is a massive <laughs> miss there. We were looking for Paul Rudd, so uh, two points left on the field go. here. Please stays even. Bit of a blessing there from the Schmodown gods. <laughs> there, we have gods now? We have gods in the Schmodown. Wow. <laughs> Question number three in the category of Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston and Jason Bateman have appeared together in five films. What is the first film they appeared in together? Multiple choice. Do that. Is it A, he's just not that into you, B, the switch, C, the breakup, or D, horrible bosses? The breakup. That is correct. Great use of the multiple wow. choice there for one point. You hear those Check movies? Out. You think, what was the first release date? I got to make sure Jennifer Aniston and Jason Bateman were in every one. That was a good play by Wiggins going to multiple choice. That's a lot of bases to cover in that 15 seconds. Here we go. Your second to last question here in the category of Jennifer Aniston. Who directed 2005's Rumor Has It? Multiple choice. That is it. A. David Frankel, B, Peyton Reed, C, John Hamburg, or D, Rob Reiner? Rob Reiner. You got to go with the OG on that one. One more point wow. here to Sweet T. Clee Wiggins, who, while navigating this round pretty well, is only up by two. Let's see if she can extend that to four. She's maneuvering it so far. One final question. In what 2019 film? To Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler reunite and star as a married couple who go on a European vacation to reinvigorate their marriage. I'm going to have to go to mobile school again. Is it A, isn't it romantic? B, the last summer? C, the week of? Or D, murder mystery? A. That is incorrect. And now for the one point steal. In what 2019 film do Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler reunite and star as a married couple who go on a European vacation to reinvigorate their marriage? A, isn't it romantic? B, the last summer? C, the week of? Or D, murder mystery? Murder mystery. That is correct for a one point steal. It's a tough category, Ellis. It's a new one, but I got to admit, I like what Sweet Tea did there. She went to multiple yep. choice over and over. She didn't let her ego get ahead of her, and that's why we're only seeing a one-point differential right now. Yeah, she wasn't taking big swings because she didn't need the Hail Mary play yet. She mitigated the damage, went to multiple choice. She got some right. She had an opportunity to have more points stolen from her, but Jacoby Bancroft only gets that last one, and so 12 to 11 right now, and it is time for Bancroft, whose faction is the Leather Jacket T-Birds as of yeah. now to speak. Spin that wheel, right? Jacoby, like a tourist on a game show, excitedly spins two thousands. Keep it or spin again. It's a tourist on a game show. You like that? Why do they always get to go when they're on vacation? I mean, it's fun. It's so ridiculous. Talking it over, just trying to mine some of that knowledge. I'm gonna keep it. Riley's head. They're gonna keep it too. All right. So after much deliberation, both competitors say, "You know what?" Maybe I don't love Jennifer Aniston the most, we here at the desk do, and maybe I'm not the biggest fan of the 2000s. We had a good time that we decade. Did. They said it's better than some of the other categories. They didn't want to risk the wild card because neither one of these teams are named after berries. So we get into Jacoby Bancroft, the deal breakers, round number two. He currently finds himself trailing by one to Sweet Tea. He can make up that difference in a hurry with his category of the 2000s and the five questions therein. Jacoby Bancroft. Question number one, for two points and the lead. Who directed Keanu Reeves and Jennifer Connelly in 2008, The Day the Earth Stood Still? Who did direct that um, is the question. That was, shoot. Um, Five, four, three. Let's go multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Scott Derrickson, B, James DeMonico, C, Sam Raimi, or D, Francis Lawrence? Francis Lawrence. 
is incorrect. And so, Sweet Tea, I'm going to repeat the question and the options for you for a point. Who directed Keanu Reeves and Jennifer Connelly in 2008's The Day the Earth Stood Still? Is it A, Scott Derrickson, B, James DeMonico, C, Sam Raimi, or D, Francis Lawrence? Scott Derrickson? Is correct for a big wow. one-point steal. That she gets the point big. back that Jacoby stole from her. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We go back to Jacoby Bancroft, who now hopes to tie with a correct answer here. Jacoby, your question in the category of the 2000s. Which actress stars as Mrs. Lovett in the musical Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street? Helena Bottom Carter. Man, she's terrific. And so is Bancroft at answering movie trivia questions. That is correct, and we are tied at Dan Marino's number 13 apiece as we head to the third question in the category of the 2000s. And it is for the lead. In the 2002 American remake of Solaris, who stars as Rhea opposite George Clooney? What's her name? Um... Uh, multiple choice, Five, please. Four, okay. And your options for a point. Is it A, Claire Ferlani, B, Madeline Stowe, C, Natasha McElhone, or D, Andy McDowell? C. C is correct. It is Natasha McElhone. I'm getting close enough to that correct pronunciation for a point. And with that, Bancroft takes the lead, but he's not done yet. He's got two questions remaining in round number two of the category of the 2000s. And your next question is... Penultimate one, here we go. Who played Loreen Newsom Twist, Jack's wife, in the film Brokeback Mountain? Which one is which is the question? That stinks. Five, um, four. I'll be safe, multiple choice. Three. All right, he's going with the safe route for a point. Your options, is it A, Michelle Williams? B, Linda Cardellini, C, Anne Hathaway, or D, Kate Mara? I got a 50-50 shot here. <laughs> Writer's having fun with that one. Jack is... Five, Michelle Williams. Four is incorrect. <laughs> so we go back to Sweet Tea again. I'll repeat the question <laughs> and the options. Who played Lorene Newsom Twist, Jack's wife, in the film Brokeback Mountain? Is it A, Michelle Williams? B, Linda Cardellini, C, Anne Hathaway, or D, Kate Mara? Anne Hathaway. That's another steal oh, for man. Sweet oh, Tea, and we are tied oh. at 14 apiece. And so a round that could have seen Bancroft run away with this. Instead, we're still tied with one question remaining for the deal breaker. The category is the 2000s, and here is your last chance to have a lead going into round number three. Who plays Joseph Sullivan? also known as Sky Captain, in the film Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Jude Law. I will point out that's an actual movie that was made and released in theaters, and that is correct for Ooh. two points. Wow. Jude Law. So Deal Breaker sort of doubting right, himself a little bit, maybe losing confidence, yeah, but you felt that Yodi Riley strength in that last answer because he's back on the train, and it is 16 to 14 as we head into round three. Pretty good one, partner. That is such a big get there for Bancroft at the end. You got to love what Clee Wiggins did there, and that's such a tough question with Brokeback. It's one or the other. The second you say the wrong answer, you've given a point to your opponent. You love <laughs> to see it. How does round number three work, my friend? In round number three, the round that will determine the match. Each competitor is going to have three total questions. They increase in difficulty and point value. Two points for the first one, three points for the second one, and five points for your final question. All right, deal breaker. We go to you first. You have the luxury of giving us your three lucky numbers for your corresponding questions. So from one to 20, what feels fortunate? Let's go 16, 15, and 8. 16, 15, and where do they get these number combinations? I don't know. I've, I've never Lost. understood it. Uh, let's go to uh, <laughs> Clee Wiggins. Duh. Your three lucky numbers from <laughs> Riley's 1 seven. to 20. 1 to 20. Uh, 5, 7, and 11. Wow, wow. All right, so here's where we stand. Clee Wiggins trails Jacoby Bancroft by 2, the deal breaker over Sweet Tea. So it will be Sweet Tea who has the first crack at an answer here. She's going to need to hit at least a two-pointer to force the hand 
of the deal breaker. Andrew, she selected category five for her two point question. What does that correspond to? That's gonna take us over to the wonderful world of Happy Madison and Adam Sandler for your two point question. And to tie the game, send it over to your opponent. Happy Madison and Adam, Adam Sandler for two points. Which Happy Madison regular plays Dickie Roberts, a former child actor who shot to fame on a 1970s TV sitcom in the film Dickie Roberts, Former Child Star? David Spade. That is correct for two oh, points. We got a tie ball game, Ellis. All righty, tied it is. And so now we go to the deal breaker who selected 16 for his two pointer. And that corresponds to the world of horror movies for two points and to regain the lead. Yeah. Which actor known for his spoof comedies plays Dracula in Mel Brooks's Dracula Dead and Loving It? Leslie Nielsen. The all-time great Leslie Nielsen is correct. Two points for Bancroft, and it's back to a two-point lead for him, 18 to 16. So we go back to Sweet T, Andrew. She selected Joe Theismann's number, number seven for her three-pointer. What does that correspond to? We're sticking with the H's. Happy Madison Horror now going to Harrison Ford for your three-point question. And to take the lead once again for three points. Ford plays Sergeant Joe Gavilan alongside Josh Hartnett in what 2000s action comedy? Hollywood Homicide. I saw it. Did she you? got it as well. Three points there for Sweet T. Oh. Clee Wiggins. A great grab there. Yeah, it's what a, a movie. Pull by Sweet T. You did not like it? <laughs> yeah. He did not. It, he didn't <laughs> like it. I know Andrew pretty well. He's nice, but he didn't like that movie. So now yeah, we go to... Jacoby Bancroft, again, the deal breaker, finds himself trailing by a point. So in order to force it back to Clee Wigan for her to hit her five-pointer, he has a three-pointer. He selected category 15, which is going to correspond to, you talk about great actors, Gene Hackman. Mm. One of my favorites. Gene Hackman, one of the all-time greats. All right, and your question for three points and the lead. In what 1990s political action thriller does Hackman portray the President of the United States alongside Clint Eastwood and Ed Harris? Oh, um. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Two. All uh, right, your category is Gene Hackman and his movies. The question, in what 1990s political action thriller does Hackman portray the President of the United States alongside Clint Eastwood and Ed Harris? Absolute weeks. power. His repeat paid off there, Ooh. and that is correct. Yeah. What a pull from way in the back caverns of his brain. 21 to 19 now. It is Bancroft who has the lead, and now Clee Wiggins faces her five-point question. If she hits it, she's going to put a whole lot of pressure on the deal breaker. If she misses, deal breaker wins his first match being coached by Mark Yodi Riley. Yeah, and you heard Riley let out an audible gasp there, a great grab. He seemed very Bancroft. excited, even titillated. Let's see if Clee Wiggins can do the same here for her manager in Winston. You selected number 11 for your five-point question. 11. Thank you, Winston. Yes, 11. <laughs> uh, and that is going to lead to the category of martial arts for five points and to send it back over. Carla Gugino, Delroy Lindo, and Jason Statham appear in what 2000s Jet Li film? So she's got two repeats left. Manager distracting her for a moment. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. That's her second one. She still has one in the category of martial arts for five points. Carla Gugino, Delroy Lindo, and Jason Statham appear in what 2000s Jet Li film? And folks, if you're not here in studio, you are missing out because the managers look more nervous than the container. He's standing there, sweet tea in hand, hand over his mouth. Five, four. The one. Three. 
That is correct. Whoa. Doesn't use the second repeat. Winston loses his mind, and we are going to another five-point question, Ellis. What a pull that was, oh. and what a movie that was. The one with Jason Statham and Jet Li, Winston Marshall, and his prize pupil, I guess you could say, Clee yeah. Sweet T. Oh, Wiggins man. now with a clutch five-pointer, and so now it all goes to the deal breaker. If he hits it, he wins. If he misses it, Clee Sweet T. Wiggins is declared the winner in Friday Night Titans. So, Jacoby, you selected, randomly though it may be, number eight for your five-point category, and that corresponds to a category that, if you've ever seen a Western, you're probably familiar with, the Eastwoods. All right. Eastwoods. And your question. For five points and the win. Credited as Scott Reeves, Scott Eastwood made his debut in this war film directed by his father. Ooh, there could be two here again. Five, Bancroft. four, three. Let's repeat that question, please. All right, he still has one repeat remaining. Categories, the Eastwoods. Credited as Scott Reeves, Scott Eastwood made his debut in this war film directed by his father. Let's give this a try. Um, Five, four. I got one more, right? Three, yes you do. Might as well use it. All right, he's gonna exhaust his repeats. And the question in the category of the Eastwoods, credited as Scott Reeves, Scott Eastwood made his debut in this war film directed by his father. Oh. Arms down to Letters to Iwo Jima. And your winner! Sway, sway, Please, sweet <laughs> <to me! laughs> oh, it, girl! Jacoby knew both movies. It was a 50-50 shot, the perspective of World War II from two different viewpoints, companion films, but the friend was the wrong pal that Jacoby selected. He said Sands of Iwo Jima. We went with Flags of Our Father. It was the correct answer. And Clee Sweet T. Wiggins gets her first victory as part of Swag. And you know, she's got to be happy. And it appears Winston Marshall is on cloud nine. Absolutely. You saw Winston Marshall lose his mind when that five <laughs> pointer was asked. Clee Wiggins was able to ignore it, recollect, get the answer right, and what an insane back and forth match. That round two, I don't think anyone saw it coming, but a great job by both competitors sticking through it, persevering, and not letting the tough questions round two get to their head when we got to round number three. Yeah, and we've always known Jacoby the deal breaker Bancroft as a good gamesman. He's got good strategy, yep. but I think it's been elevated by the tutorial from Mark Yodi Riley. He's one of the best the game has ever seen, and so him kind of uploading some of his notes how into Jacoby's mighty brain. That could be a formidable duo going forward if they choose to work like that, but there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that he has to sort out with his old faction. And so while they process that, we are now gonna toss it to the great Jen Sturger who has an interview with the winner, representing now Team Swag, Clee Sweet T. Wiggins and her manager, Winston Marshall. Thank you so much, guys. I am backstage with a very happy, oh, oh and generous, Come on. Come uh, Winston on. Marshall and Clee, Clee, sweet tea. First of all, it's so great to see you again. You too. But I have to say, that might have been one of the best matches I've seen you play. So welcome back. Thank you. Yes, I tend to make comebacks. That's so. That's my whole <laughs> steez right you were now. Just saying back here, you were like. They were like, that was a great comeback. And you're like, that's how I play best. <laughs> yeah. Even if you get the least bit nervous playing from behind it all. No, I'm a little jittery off this tee, but I'm not nervous. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey look, I told you, this is my Granny M sweet tea recipe. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. I love you, Granny. Yo, real talk. She didn't skip on no sugar. I'm going to be real with you. Yeah. I've been wired. That's why after she said the one, I said, oh! <laughs> Like, I, I have no chill right now. I have zero chill. Yeah. You want to talk about zero chill? I don't know, you, you probably couldn't see in your peripheral and you probably had so many emotions going through your head, but when you hit that five pointer, mm -hmm. Winston left his body. Yeah, oh, I can see it out the corner of my eye. It was great. It was, it was like a magician was doing a magic trick and I had to run to the other side of the room. That's kind of what I felt. I she pulled it out of nowhere like a rabbit out of a hat and I was just like, oh Lord. So, you know, we here though, swag, we back baby. I told you we got the drip. Yeah. Who got more drip than sweet tea? Drip, drip.
trip trip <laughs> indeed so I guess what's next I mean I'm loving this vibe between you two I'm loving this rejuvenated swag because let's face it you had a rough go of it last season Winston despite I mean it was one of those things where you just had close call after close call after close call. Do you feel like you might have finally found the winning recipe, uh, you know, from your gra grandma sweet tea and with uh, Wiggins here? I mean, this is like Michael's secret sauce from Space Jam, but I, I honestly, I honestly feel, and that's what we needed. We, we were dealing with a lot of drama last year for no reason whatsoever. And now that all of the fat has been trimmed, we can go up here and look like a fine cut of Kobe beef. Let's go. And sweet tea, she the best cut. What you know about that? Congratulations, yeah. Clay. It's so, so great to see you. And like I said, uh, I'm very excited for this new season for you because if that's any indication, we're looking at a brand new Clay Wiggins. Thank you. I hope so. Here we go. All right, well, you see a very happy swag, and I think that the new addition is going to pay dividends going forward like we saw here today. Yeah, I mean, I heard Winston Marshall talking to Clee before the match, just saying, go out there and have fun. That's really what it's all about. You're early on in your career. You don't need to worry about winning a belt today. You just need to go out and have a good time. It's not just about having fun because, you know, you're in the MTS. It loosens you up. It lets your brain go deep like she did on that five-pointer. Great stuff here from Swag. You know, they have sweet tea vodka. You interested in that at all? I mean, why not? Let's get out of here. No, 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 no. Trust me. I've had it. I've had it, but you do not want it. Oh. You do not want it. All right. So they're probably going to be enjoying some because it's a victorious sweet tea and swag. But then when we go to the faction list for the moment, deal breaker, Jacoby Bancroft, it's nice that he does have someone in his corner, yeah. especially when that someone is Mark Yodi Riley. Yeah, I'm sure Jen Sturger is very, very excited to talk to the deal breaker and Mark Yodi Riley right now. Jacoby, not the outcome we wanted, obviously, but I gotta say, that felt like watching two fighters just like sit there and trading blows the entire match. That could have gone either way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was exciting. That was a lot. She kept me on my toes the whole time. The back and forth was insane, and it was so much fun. Um, even though, unfortunately, I, I didn't pull out the win today, but it was an awesome match. It was it was a good time. <laughs> it felt very much like old school Schmodown, didn't it, to you? Where it just like it felt just kind of friendly, and like there was that camaraderie between. I have to, you of all people, Riley, know what that vibe was like back in the day. Yeah. How do you feel watching this gentleman play today? I, uh, I feel good. I mean, look at that first round. Perfect round, right? We had a little uh, bit of the 2000s problem there, but it was a nice back and forth, and it did. It was like the old days. It felt fun, didn't it? I was having fun out there. That absolute power, that pull for the three-pointer, she misses that five. We're in a different spot here. That's a lot to work on. That's a lot to build off of. Not bad, kid. Absolutely. You had that chance to put her away in round two. Were you just kicking yourself after that happened? Did it shake you at all for round three? No, it didn't shake me at all. I knew 2000s was going to be a very broad category, and there was a lot to do it. But looking at the score for, for what it was, I felt like that's something I needed to risk on and, and to go for, even though I didn't sweep it like I, I wanted to. I mean, but uh, it was good. It was, it was I was happy with it overall with how I answered those questions, yeah. besides the one I missed. Plus, you know, like, there is a lot of drama surrounding you right now, whether you want there to be or not with your old faction, obviously. Does anything like that play into your mindset when you're out there? I mean, there's there's a lot happening right now. There's 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 people acting in certain ways that I didn't expect before to for, for them to do, so I have to kind of push that out of my mind because at the core of everything is how we play this game, right? It's how fun this game is. And for the people who don't see how fun it is and want to be mean or jerks or anything like that, then it's, then I don't know what they're doing because th th we're here to have fun, people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well Very set. enthusiastic agreement from well the set. crowd. So I have to say, I'm really liking this energy between you guys. I'm really liking this synergy between you guys. I know that you were just technically here as an advisor, Riley, but do you think maybe there could be something here, a little something more? Look, I have a lot of chores to get to. There's a big leaf wall that I have to get to. Um, it's a we'll see. Okay. I'll I like we'll I see. like it. You got some moxie. I like it. I got to go trim my leaves. All right, you go take care of that. And uh, tough show today, man, but uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So look, you see, obviously disappointed to lose, but I don't think that Jacoby, the deal breaker, Bancroft is down and out by any stretch of the imagination. He seems like he is raring to go. He wants to play another match right now. I mean, he got a perfect round number one, and then he goes to round number two, 2000s. You saw him and Riley deliberate at the wheel for a minute. It's a really wide category. You have no idea what you're gonna get. And today, it just wasn't Jacoby Bancroft's day, but there is still much more to be seen from him and hopefully Mark 
here in the MTS. Better days for that nameless team. Faction ahead, but for Friday night, it's always the night of Titans here at the Schmodown. And we're just getting warmed up because the main event is almost oh, upon man. us. Mike the Killer Kalinowski, the Boston badass page for Betty. It's been a lot of trash talk between those two, and the score is about to be settled right after this. You know, so many different times I'm going through the comments section and I see, oh, I would have gotten that one right. I could be a Schmodown personality. You think you have what it takes to become a Schmodown champion? Well, the auditions for season nine, it's open all year. You submit a three to five minute video to Schmodown Auditions at skybound.com. You want to be a champion? Of course, you got to be good at trivia, but are you a personality? Do you have a big character? Show us what you got. Schmodown Auditions at skybound.com and become the next big star of the Schmodown tomorrow. Glad you're watching the matches, and I hope you're having a fun time. I also wanted to know if you didn't know already, we got a brand new channel. It's the Christian Harloff channel. Head on over there, subscribe to it. I have so much stuff on this channel. I have reviews, trailer reactions. I have the big thing. If you didn't know what that was, it's a podcast that I do, and I have guests on all the time. Wednesday nights, I have Sith Council. It's our Star Wars show. Lots of great stuff. If you didn't know I have my own channel, well, I do. So you should head on over there, subscribe. All right, now get back to watching this. Tweet at me. Tell me what you thought about tonight's episode. The Wildberries are back. You know what that means? The Wildberry shirts are back. Everybody wants a Wildberry shirt. That's their whole shtick. But you know about Lady Justice? Support Marisol McKee and get one of those shirts. How about your favorite factions? Whether it's corruption, swag, the list goes on and on and on. With the brand new reboot shirt, it is on the store at Skybound right now. We have a bunch of stuff on the Schmodown store right now. Please go and check that out. Share it on our social media, hashtag Schmodown, and let everyone else see you do it. It's the Schmodown. We have a lot going on, and I know yeah. that you're juggling a lot of stuff with Inner Geekdom, and you got teams coming up, but this is singles, and I just... I, yeah, I told you I want to play. Let's do it. I know, but yeah. you're playing Paige for Ready, and she but, is the Boston badass, and... So what? But you, you need to be ready for her. You can't underestimate Okay, she beat Bateman. I beat Bateman. Okay. You always do that. Don't underestimate me. I'm not underestimating you, I got this. I just hey, need you to what's, be... What? I need you to be prepared. Yeah. Okay? Because she's part of this faction, the fan favorites, and I don't know, but I just feel like they can just appear out of it. This seems like a well, well, well situation. Hit him. Well, well, well. Are you guys just standing out here posed like this? Let me yeah. tell you something about old news. Okay. Let me tell you what is old news. You know that it's news that's old. I would think that's the definition of it. Yeah, but thank you for letting me know that. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Very giving. Nice to see you, Paige. How you doing there, Mike? I mean, it's a nice shiny belt you got there. Thank but you. I'm a certified badass, Mike. And tonight, your singles season ends. Well, I'm a mm. certified IG GOAT. And one thing I'm not is a singles champion, which is what I want to be. And you've been playing great. Hey, I gotta be honest. Bateman, me and you, both beating him. That was fun, wasn't it? I love watching you last season. That was fantastic. The whole season. You kind of rusted on your laurels with that. You should beat a couple other players. But hey, you're playing great. I just got to beat you to keep going with the singles. No hard feelings. I appreciate that. I mean, you got the guys here backing you up. This is nice. This whole thing. See this gold shiny belt right here? Something I'm missing. Something on this other shoulder right here. And I've had a team's belt. I haven't had a singles belt. You're getting your ass kicked tonight, so okay. I'm sorry. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. If you're nice to say, don't say anything. You guys, it's been a real pleasure. It's, a, it's been great. Paige, boys, JT. Always nice to see you, pal. Listen, he has nothing written on the back of his suit, okay? Yeah. That's your win. Yeah. That's How's your he even win. know his name? Good luck knowing your name later without written on the back of your suit. And we are back here on Friday Night Titans for the main event. Andrew Guy, this is what people in the Schmodown communities, the chat rooms, the threads have been squawking about all week long since Paige, the Boston Badass for Betty, crashed post-match. And yeah. she said, hey, I want a piece of Bateman eventually. But right now, she called Mike the Killer Kownowski a dinosaur. Well, guess what? That dinosaur has an inner geekdom championship currently, and he's looking to make his mark in singles. A victory today over the Boston Badass could matriculate him in that career. It's a really interesting spot that Paige for Betty continues to put herself in. A lot of confidence in her gameplay, but we saw it pay off last season, where she was able to upset Ben the Boss Bateman. Can she do it again tonight against, and I say this all the time, and it 
hurts me a little bit, but a Rushmore player in Kalinowski, arguably the greatest inner geekdom player of all time. I know, it hurts. But singles is not his division. This is not a place where he is known to be a dominant force. He's been a 50-50 player. Can Paige take another knock off a legend today? Well, look, Paige for Betty had a huge win against Bateman. That's undisputed last year, but she also ended her year as a TKO loss to Griffin Newman, and then Mike Kalinowski ended his season as a loss to Janine the Machine by TKO. Yes. And so there's looking for some rebounds here to a certain extent, but really this is about what suddenly has become a very personal rivalry for the Boston Badass. She sees these goats of the various divisions in the movie Trivia Schmone, and she says, I want a piece of you and a piece of you. Well, you got it, but sometimes uh, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Ken Knapsack, you're our boss tonight. Have at it. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of our friends around the world, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Tonight's match is scheduled for three rounds to a finish in the singles division. Intro juicing first. With a record of three wins and two defeats, representing the fan favorites, and accompanied to the arena by her manager, Adam Witt. She is the Boston Badass, Paige from Betty. Mixed cheers and boos <laughs> as the fan favorites make their way to the stage, Ellis. Yeah, not these fans in particular in our studio audience, but uh, playing to the crowd, I guess, at home, the fan favorites. That is Paul Preston hanging out, looking like once upon a time in the valley. And then we have Adam Witt, the official, I think, manager of the fan favorites. And there's the Boston Badass looking confident, looking spry, ready to go. I mean, when you're wearing that much leather, Ellis, as a faction, how could you not feel great? Uh, that's right. It looks like Paige is hanging out with her two dads. Back to you, Ken. And her opponent. Uh, let me stop you right there. With a record of eight wins and eight defeats with four knockouts. Representing corruption and led to the arena by his manager, the Queen of Corruption, Shannon Barney. He is the current. Intergeekdom Movie Trivia Showdown Champion of the World, Mike the Killer Kalinowski. Hey, so corruption has emerged. There is Green, there is Mike, and there is the belt. They just look as confident and as happy and that uh, devil may care grin. It's fascinating to see the turn that the audience has made. It's almost like in the Dark Knight, where you die being a hero, you live long enough to see yourself <laughs> become the villain. Yeah. The fans <laughs> rooting for the killer here and the queen of corruption. A bit of a change over the last few years. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're just trying to pick the lesser of their two evils, but we have a raucous studio audience. One member who I saw in a tank top showing off the bazooka. So Love the that. Kalinowskis <laughs> and the Frivetti clan are out there now. There's that inner geekdom championship belt. Mike will proudly display that, but again, not a whole lot of inner geekdom questions. Maybe some yeah. in round two. Maybe we get a category in round number one. But this is a singles match through and through between the badass and the killer. And the rules of round number one are as thus. Ten questions will be asked to the field, spanning the entire movie trivia galaxy. Fifteen seconds to write down a response to each question. If you get it correct, you earn yourself a point. Keep in mind, competitors, three repeats throughout the duration of the three-round match. So use them, but use them wisely. Boston Badass, Paige for Betty, you made quite a scene last week, and now you're here to make good on your claim. Are you ready to go? I was born ready, guys. So let's All right, this. and Mike Kalinowski, were you also born ready, or is this more of a recent development? I was born good looking. Is that being okay. born ready? All right. But I mean... Were you a cute baby? Are you kidding me? Look at me. Uh, of course I was probably, a cute baby. Yeah. Probably Come on now. Yeah, jury's still yeah. out on that one. Yeah. The all doctor right, spanked my Ken. butt, the nurses spanked my butt, everyone was spanking my butt in that delivery room. I mean, they do that to all babies. It's not <laughs> Ken, really my God, Cameras are on, I'm just going to talk. You know that. Come on now. Uh, Ken, just scream Save something us. in the microphone. Save us. Then let's get ready 
to Schmoda. Oh, thank God for naps up. You know, saving our lives. You got you got the kids out there. They're not paying attention to substitute teachers, but then we got the pit boss making them bang erasers after school. So, question one, courtesy of Andrew. Kyle. Here we go. Badass and killer. Action adventure is your category for question number one. Who appears in the following action films? The Meg, Ghosts of Mars, and The Italian Job. Did you ever think when you were a kid that you'd be uh, <laughs> announcing any sort of contest between a badass and a killer? No, you know, I felt like I had uh, real big dreams when I was a kid. But this, you're realizing it. <laughs> I know. Five, <sighs> four, three, what do you want to be? Two. I don't know. Doctor, happy. astronaut, archaeologist. Pens down. Let's go to Paige. It is Jason Statham. Yes, it is. And did Mike Kalinowski have He stole my name. He was like, oh, they call me Handsome Rob because I'm Handsome Mike. Oh, he still got the yucks. He yeah. still got him. Yeah. This guy is, went from being Mike Kalinowski to Rich Little. That's a reference for anybody born before 1990. Here is your next question in the category of horror movies. Which famed horror franchise features performances from Dennis Hopper, Matthew McConaughey, Jessica Biel, and R. Lee Ermey? I think I was saying uh, R. Lee Ermey's name wrong for about the first 15 plus years of my life. How, how do you mispronounce I that? I just said Emery. Just do oh. that. Oh. You see me do it on the desk probably yeah. tonight as well. You don't want to mispronounce that guy. You're, you're, you're no. doing a lot of push-ups. Rest in peace. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down to Kalinowski. All right, all right, all right. Text Chase on Master. Hey, yeah, still got the ups. There we there go. It is. There we go. That's all right. correct. And Paige? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Also yeah. has right. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. So we go on to our next category. Question number three is going to come from the category of the 2010s. Ooh. Great decade there. Of the following actors, who doesn't appear? Who doesn't appear in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald? Dan Fogler, Eddie Redmayne, John Voight, or Zoe Kravitz? You know, I feel like you could just take a dartboard of a bunch of actors, throw darts at it, and you're going to hit somebody in one of those Fantastic Beasts movies. I, you know, so what? many people. I have seen. Only the first Harry Potter in that entire universe. <laughs> you gave up? I, I five, four. Didn't understand any three. Of the, the Sorting spells. Hat did not like you. Nope. Two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Paige. Is it uh, Zoe Kravitz? It is not Zoe Kravitz. Does Mike have it? He left this pencil in George Costanza's car. John Voight. The guy even has. Oh, you got it. Wow. Come on, you book. got that one. That was Josh McCougar. We hope you're watching. Now go to bed. It is three to two. Mike Kalinowski taking a lead over Paige for Betty early in the match as we head to our next category, which is sports movies. And the question. What 1992 hockey film featured the tagline, he's never coached, they've never won, together they'll learn everything about winning? You know, it's got to be a bit frustrating there for, for Betty running into a Kind of yeah, IG adjacent category there. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's an innocent decade in 2010. Yeah, but then the Fantastic there. Beast was the question, and so now he's now he's got the sunglasses. I mean, they're both smiling. <laughs> Four, oh, with this one. Three, two, one. Pens down, Mike. It's a sports question. Did you have it? Well, this is a tough one. Guys. I don't know. I don't have an accent. I don't have an impression either. But I'm gonna say it's the Mighty Ducks. You didn't want to quack? All right. How about Paige for Betty? Quack. 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 There quack. you go. Mighty Ducks, guys. She had the Mighty there we Ducks go. written down. Quack, 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 oh, yeah, there it is. Ducks fly together, Ellis, as we get to question number five here in the category of directors. For which sci-fi film did director Denis Villeneuve receive his only Academy Award nomination for Best Director thus far? It's almost frightening, the mob mentality of the studio audience. As I know, soon as Andrew Guy anything. says quack, they were just in. They were ready to run through a brick wall for you. Should try this with something. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> leave I'm, it in the studio. I'm happy up here on the desk. I'd like to stay. Five, four, three, two, one. Great power comes great responsibility. There Pens down. Let's go to Paige first. Is it uh, a rival? It is a rival. Oh. And Mike Kalinowski. Okay, a rival. Also okay. had a rival. So Mike stays perfect halfway through round one for Betty Trails by only one. We careen into the next category, which is crime films and the question this 1995 martin scorsese film features supporting performances from james woods don rickles and kevin pollack two of those people very funny thank you very i was very trying to funny. think of how i wanted to phrase my opinions <laughs> on one of them 
And <laughs> Twitter aside, just... <laughs> two of them. Very funny. Five. Four. It's appropriate that the other's three, best role is two, Hades. One. The other one has a high school named that. Uh, your pens are down, and we go to Mike Kalinowski. Did he have it? Oh, I wanted to get into the town, so I opened up a casino called the Gold Rush. I can go into those sandwiches. And you think you can come get me, is and you throw me out of town? You... It's a casino. I think that was De Niro or maybe Pesci. It's both of them. It's, it's like Pesci and De Niro a, had a kid. It's a cornucopia of uh, For Betty, did you have it? <laughs> Paige? And yeah, that's what Mike will be doing, uh, serving me at the casino with his drinks. Looking that, really nice. I can see that happen. I can see that scenario playing out as it stands. I here. want an equal amount of blueberries in every muffin. The I equal amount six in every five. muffin. Kalinowski, still perfect, at least with movie trivia. Yes, answer. praying to God we do not get a Michael Caine question. As we oh. get to question at number seven, uh -oh. we can just cut off their mics. New releases. <laughs> Taylor Sheridan directed What Famous Actress? as smoke jumper Hannah alongside John Bernthal, Aidan Quinn, and Nicholas Holt in 2021's Those Who Wish Me Dead. I don't know what it is. I don't know what a smoke jumper is, but that sounds awesome. Yeah, right? It's, it sounds like the coolest G.I. Joe. All right, going back in time, that's what I want to be as a kid. <laughs> smoke jumper. Five, four, three, two. I'll use a repeat. Okay, that is a page for Betty repeat. That is her first. Uh, seventh question here coming from the category of new releases. Taylor Sheridan directed what famous actress as Smoke Jumper, Hannah, alongside John Bernthal, Aidan Quinn, and Nicholas Holt in 2021's Those Who Wish Me Dead? I'll be honest, I thought it was for Those Who Wish Me Dead, and I was wrong again. You just got too excited. You like talking. I do. You like attention. I almost you just need it. Added you it in. It. Did you already write it down? I don't know what, you, I know what you're doing over there. No. It's your first time in Three. a live event, isn't it? I like yeah. you're One, you're doing sorry. great, kids. <laughs> okay. Pens down, let's go to I mean, Paige. Uh, Angelina Jolie. Is correct. Wow. Did Mike have it? Wow. I did have it, yeah. All right. They've I got it. Studying. Seven, I six. talking a lot of trash, but for Betty doing it, good job holding her own. So They're both backing up their very now. confident okay. personas. Good to know. Your Not next many. question is the category Musicians in Film. And for a point. David Bowie features in what Christopher Nolan film featuring supporting performances from Michael Caine, Scarlett Johansson, oh and Andy gosh. Serkis? God. You know, oh I said it, God. and I just did it to everyone in this Did you know that room. was coming? I affected the lives of dozens of people, oh hundreds God. of people, so many thousands. <coughs> uh, good God. <laughs> Five, four, three, <clears throat> two, hands down. Michael Caine. There's a turn. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> when you have a magician, and he's got the three parts to it. And then that little birdie died. But that was played by the movie's called The Prestige. Thank you, Michael. That's okay. Michael Caine for Prestige you. is go. correct. Uh, Paige, you can just give us the correct answer if you yes, wish. Yes, it's The Prestige. Okay. Yeah. Paige had it. We can actually give her another point <laughs> just for <laughs> speeding that along. You get a point every yeah. time you just answer and shut I'm up. I'm late. I'm causing us to go along. Who is this guy, right? Uh, Come on now. All right. Here we go. Penultimate question here in round number one. Eight seven is the score. Question number nine. Fantasy sci-fi. Julia Roberts and Lily Collins star opposite each other in this 2012 fantasy based on Snow White. His Michael Caine is always so sad. So I'm just enjoying the silence. I gotta be honest. I should just, you're right. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know oh, how to take it a hint. Oh, feels good. Yeah, just imagine you're on a beach somewhere for another couple seconds. Yeah. A couple of pelicans flying over. Margarita in the hands. Maybe even a Mai Five, Tai, because you're on a beach. Four, I was told there would be no salt. Three, <laughs> two. <laughs> One. Pens down. Pens down. And we go to Paige for Betty. Mira Mira. Mira Mira is correct. Mike Kalinowski. Ooh, Mira Mira. Hey, Ooh. look at him. Right. Mira Mira is correct. And we go to your last question in round number one. And it happens to be in the category of comedy. Ah! <laughs> Movie trivia slow down. is still before a live studio audience. For one point, your question, wrapping up round number one and possibly for a perfect round for Mike, what 2009 comedy featuring Rashida Jones and J.K. Simmons marked the third collaboration between Paul Rudd and Jason Segel after Knocked Up and Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Shout out of a cannon, who do you take? Paul Rudd or Jason Segel? Do you have a favorite? 
Uh, it's hard to go against Rudd for really anything, right? right? I, Siegel amuses me. Yeah. Quite, quite frankly, I, I really enjoy his work, but uh, Paul Rudd, one of a kind, right? Yeah. Right. No. You, right. You would have gotten in trouble yeah. if you said anything otherwise, even though Five. I as well love Jason Four. Siegel. Mm. Three, two, one. Pens down. Mike Count asks you for a perfect round. I'm not going to do a Lou Ferrigno impersonation, but it's I love you, man. It is I love you, man, and Lou Thank Ferrigno you. does feature Paige for Betty. I don't love this man, but it is I love you, man. All right, and so it is 10 to 9 as we close things up. A very well-played contest thus far by both competitors with some added flavor. And Mike Kalinowski, perfect round number one, meaning he gets a bonus question. Andrew Guy's going to be asking it. Mike's going to attempt to answer it. Mike, you don't need to write this down. You can just simply answer it within 15 seconds. Okay. All right, Killer, your bonus question. 1978 saw the release of what sequel featuring Roy Scheider reprising his role as Chief Martin Brody? That's one of those trick ones, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Jaws 2. That is correct. You seemed upset. Perfect, perfect round number one. I and didn't know if there was a subtitle. You know, for Betty's got to be a little bit upset thinking about how well she played in round number one. It, again, I go back to the fact that the question she missed, while it was 2010s, it did lean in favor of Mike because of that IG <laughs> belt on the desk. That's right, and he has a two-point lead. Now as we head into round number two, this is the wheel round. The wheel will emerge. Each competitor gets a spin. Five questions will emerge from whatever category that wheel lands on. Each question's worth two points unless they need multiple choice. Keep in mind, stealing is available in this round, and this round only in this match. So, Mike the Killer Kalinowski, you've been in this position once or twice. You have the lead after round number one. Would you like to spin first or defer to your opponent? Usually I do go first, but uh, it is your first time in studio. It's your first time with a wheel, isn't it? Ladies first, please. Oh, you're such a gentleman. Of course. All right. right. So, it almost felt like it he was being nice. I, I almost. almost being yeah. nice. You may spin from the pegs that you're ready. All right, round and round it goes, and it is Batman. Definitely. Doesn't say the like Batman, just any Batman. Any Batman. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, yeah. save all of us, please. The crowd a little I'm, excited for Paige to keep Batman, but Mike Kalinowski knows a lot about that. Yeah, you have to yeah, assume he's on topic, but I think James yeah. Bond and We're going to spin again. The They're going to spin again, and that's right. James Bond also working on that wheel, but she spun Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, All right, the career of beloved performer Jennifer Connelly <laughs> is now the subject of five questions for Paige for Betty. All right, Paige, Jennifer Connelly is your category, starting with question number one of five right here. Who directed 1991's The Rocketeer? featuring Billy Campbell and Jennifer Connelly. That is Joe Johnston. That is correct for two there points, and we are all tied up here at 11. As so we get to the second question here for Jennifer Connelly. <clears throat> Jennifer Connelly makes her theatrical film debut as the younger version of Elizabeth McGovern's Deborah in what epic crime film starring Robert De Niro and James Woods? That is Once Upon a Time in America. That is correct for two more points. Gets the title perfect and a clean like apples, round Mike. two so far. Question number three. In 1986's Labyrinth, starring Jennifer Connelly, what is the name of the Goblin King played by David Bowie? That is Jareth. Jareth is Jareth. correct for two more points. Yes. She is breezing oh, through this yes. round. Kalinowski hoping she stumbles oh, somewhere. She's feeling it so far. Big two questions this. remain for the badass. Darren Aronofsky directed Ellen Burstyn, Jared Leto, and Jennifer Connelly in this 2000s psychological drama. Rec Vein for Dream. I still think Burstyn should yeah. win an Oscar for this. Yeah. Age for Betty, you're not Perfect. wrong. In round number two, 17 to 11. Can she continue this trend with her final question? Jennifer Conley. 1996's Mulholland Falls, featuring Nick Nolte and Jennifer Connolly, follows a squad of LAPD detectives during what decade? Uh, can I go multiple choice to be safe? Is it A, the 1930s, B, the 1940s, C, the 1950s, or D, the 1960s? I believe it is the 1950s. 
It's always tough to check down on those questions, Ellis. But Paige for Betty has a perfect yep. round number two. Only goes to multiple choice once, 18 to 11. A great round for the Boston Badass. And so important for her to not give a steal opportunity to Mike yes. Kalinowski. He's so good at picking up those spare parts in round two. And so now he finds himself trailing by seven as he strolls to the wheel, uh, confidently so, I might add. Yeah, you know, Mike is looking for James Bond. You know he's looking for Batman, but a lot of other stuff up there on the wheel. Yeah, he's got a lot of good stuff that he wants to spin. And SCTV alumni, the great Canadian sketch show. I love that as a wheel slice. I do, too. That's a I, lot of I fun. I have a feeling, though, that Batman, maybe even Keanu Reeves, the yeah. is especially again, guys. Jimmy Bond is just too tempting. Yeah. Gonna spin again. He's going to spin else. again. And you got to wonder what's under those wild card slices. I know. We might find out. No. Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Yeah. Much better. And Mike is going to take the red pill here. You hear him talking to his manager saying much better already. Very happy with the respin there. SCTV, yeah, one of the respin. newer slices, so maybe not quite as deep. But Mike's not familiar or comfortable. This is a great way for him to land. I think I might do OK in SCTV. I think we both but, would. Uh, Keanu Reeves, not a bad option, especially if you're a fan of inner geekdom movies. He tends to be in a few inner geekdom-ish kind of films. So Mike, we are about to begin your questioning for Keanu Reeves. OK. And your first question in that dude's category for two points. Which actress co-starred with Keanu Reeves in the films The Devil's Advocate and Sweet November? That would be Charlize Theron. That's the, probably the right way to pronounce her last name. That is correct <laughs> for two points, and Kalinowski cuts the lead to five. And your next question in the world of Keanu Reeves. In the film Constantine, John Constantine learns that he is sick and likely to die from what specific disease? It's, well, it's two, lung cancer, leukemia. Need a final answer. I think you have to give one answer. Five. Multiple choice. Four. All right, your multiple choice options for a point. Is it A, leukemia, B, lung cancer, <laughs> C, brain cancer, or D, hepatitis? <laughs> Writers laughing to themselves right now. Lung cancer, B. 50-50 shot, and Mike got it. There yeah. you go, for a point. That nice is point. correct, and Mike is continues to climb leukemia? his way back into okay. the match. Well, no, Still the same trails thing if you the okay. Boston Badass by four. Fair he enough, heads to his enough. third question. In the world of Keanu Reeves movies, Mike, which late actor co-starred with Keanu Reeves in the drama My Own Private Idaho as Mikey Waters? That would be Henry Jones Jr. himself, Mr. River Phoenix. You are correct, and you are a nerd. <laughs> he took us on a bit of a journey with that one. <laughs> you're the biggest dork I know, and you're also correct. For two points, Mike, now your penultimate question in the world of Keanu Reeves. It's 18 to 16. He could tie the lead of the Boston Badass right now with his penultimate question in point break. Johnny Utah had played football at what university before becoming an FBI agent? <sighs> nice. Multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, USC, B, UCLA, C, Ohio State, or D, Arizona State? UCLA is incorrect. And so for a one-point steal, Paige, I'm going to repeat the question and the options. Mm -hmm. In point break, Johnny Utah had played football at what university before becoming an FBI agent? Is it A, USC, B, UCLA, C, Ohio State, or D, Arizona State? I believe it's Ohio State. Guy had never seen the ocean before. <laughs> that is Ohio correct. State for one point, and that could be a big steal as it's now 19 to 16. And, and okay, so the Boston Badass has the lead, three points. She's going to be taking the lead into the final round, but Mike Kalinowski still has one more Keanu Reeves question that could close the gap if he hits it. And here is that question: What California city? do Bill and Ted hail from in the Bill and Ted franchise? 
We could drive there right now, go to the Circle K where strange things are afoot. That is correct for two points, and Mike cuts the lead to just one, and this is getting good. 19 for the badass, 18 for the killer. Your thoughts thus far? Great steal there by Frabetti. Staying on top there through round two, a really difficult thing to do. Kalinowski, though, I'm impressed with how he navigated through Keanu Reeves, especially the question where he knew the answer but wanted to check down to make sure. Now, we did offer him both of his suggestions in leukemia and lung cancer, but I love the play there to not give up too much. It's not a fun tug of war to have there, but no. when you look at this as the greater context of things, you know, Mike, the key for him in round three is just not kicking yourself over what could have been yes. had he spun a Batman or had he spun a James Bond because now round three is upon us, and this is the round that will determine the match. Each competitor will face three questions in difficult and point value ascending. Two points for the first one, three points for the next one, and five points for the toughest question of them all that could see a winner of this match declared. Mike Kalinowski had the lead going into round number two, but now he finds himself trailing by just one point. So Paige Frabetti, you have the luxury of giving us your three lucky numbers first. From 1 to 20, what feels fortunate? I'm going to go with 3, 6, 9, because I'm feeling pretty damn fine. So. All right, then. Good Mike Kalinowski, your lucky numbers, sir. 12, 2, and 14. 12, 2, and 14. They were prepared with those. They were. Yeah. Bad All numbers, right. man. So Bad it is numbers. Mike Kalinowski who's going to... Strike first here, and over here he with could the bad see the coming. lead Come if he on. hits this question, Andrew. Something he something selected new. number 12 for yeah. his first question. What did he hit? That is going to take us to the 2000s, the decade of the 2000s for okay. your two-point question here. Killer, and to regain the lead, which actor stars in the lead role of Morton Rainey in the 2004 Stephen King adaptation, Secret Window? Johnny Depp. That is correct for two yeah. points. 20 to 19 as we send it back over to the Boston Badass. This is going to be a fun tennis yeah. match oh, yes. in round three, I have a feeling. All right, Paige for Betty, you are now up. You find yourself trailing by a point to the guy you called out last week, called him a dinosaur, but now you have a chance to take a one point lead. If you hit this question, you selected number three for your two pointer, and that corresponds to the world of Sly and Arnie. No idea what those names mean, but apparently it has something to do with movies. So here's your question for two points. In what 1990s Arnold Schwarzenegger film will you find him playing himself, a cop named Jack Slater, and the Shakespearean character of Hamlet? Five. The last Four. action hero. What? The last action hero. It's so tough, yep. but I cannot award the points to Paige for Betty, although she clearly knows. Oh. All right, you. Uh, now we might, like we might have a challenge. We might have a challenge here from Adam Witt. I would like to hear the basis for that judgment. <laughs> okay, again, I the judgment is. I assume there's is, another movie called The Last Action Hero, and she said the name of the wrong movie. Yeah. Oh you, no, there's a movie called The Last yeah. Action Hero, and you said that. Darn you it, You can pontificate all you want, the but uh, the, the like rules the, like, are you cannot movie. add an article to a title unless that article is in the title. It is called Last Action Hero, not The Last Action Hero. You are allowed to challenge, should you wish. So I'm gonna save, save it for the next question. That's fine, that's fine. All right, so no yep. challenge will be issued. And again, it's so tough that it, it, you know, is slightly different rules the way that they're interpreted this year. And so it is last action hero, not the last action hero. So here's where we stand. We stick with Paige for Betty, who still has plenty of range to win this match because she has a three pointer that she is now gonna face. Paige, you selected number six for your three point question. And to give yourself a two point lead over Kalinowski, that corresponds to the world of Harrison Ford movies. Harrison Ford Films and your question. Always looking for his family. For three points and the lead. Sidney Pollack directed Harrison Ford and Julia Ormond in what 1990s romantic dramedy remake? That is Sabrina. What a way to pick herself up yeah. off the mat and get a correct it. answer there. It's so tough to have that two-pointer go against you. 
didn't bat an eye, and now Paige for Betty has a lead, 22 to 20 over Kalinowski. So we go back to him for his three-pointer. Andrew, what number did he select? Yeah, I mean, Ellis, I mean, in moments like that, you can hear Paige for Betty even winning over the crowd just a little bit, <laughs> yeah. knowing how much that can hurt with the just fans. one word. She's Kalinowski over the fans. selected yeah, number Boston. two for his three-point question. Mike, that is going to take you to the wonderful world of mysteries and thrillers for your three-point question. And to take the lead once again, Kevin Costner stars as a retired sheriff named George Blackledge in what 2020 film opposite Diane Lane? Five, four, three, two. Let him go. That is correct. Oh! Three points. A oh! last second grab there by the killer. I don't think that was acting. Well, Mike's a great actor. Yeah. I don't think that was a performance. I think he was really struggling to find ah! the correct name for that. He nailed it. The Wee Boy. So it is 23 to 22 boys. in favor of Kalinowski. So Wee now boy, we go back to Paige for Betty who has her five-pointer. She hits it, she's got to put a whole lot of pressure on Kalinowski. If she misses it, Mike Kalinowski will be declared the winner of this hotly contested matchup. And here we go, Paige, you selected nine. Number nine. Nine times. Nine times. And Paige, that corresponds to the category of new releases. And your question. For five points and the lead. What 2021 dramedy features supporting performances from Judy Dench, Kieran Hines, and Jamie Dornan? That is Belfast. And that is correct wow. for five yeah. huge points. Oh, it always makes me nervous when people answer a five that quickly, but confident as hell is the Boston Badass. It's one of those movies you hear about now because we're coming off award Good season, point, but yeah. as far as the cast and the supporting roles, what a pull there. But now Mike Kalinowski has a shot to win the match outright. He trails by four. The good news is he's got a five-pointer coming up. Now Mike selected for his five-point question number 14, and that corresponds to the world of horror movies. That's right, some horror for one of these players coming in just a moment. Five points and the win. The character of Amanda Young, played by Shawnee Smith, appears in what horror franchise? Time is not at the essence. He's got three repeats left. Yeah, he did a good job holding on that three-pointer to make sure he had all three. Five. Four. Repeat the question. Three. That's his first. He has two remaining. In the category of horror, the character of Amanda Young, played by Shawnee Smith, appears in what horror franchise? You know, it's always so tough though, when you watch a guy like Mike Kalinowski because he is a great game. He could just be doing this to get ahead of his opponent. He loves to flex, but five, four. Oh, repeat the question, please. All right, that's his second, one remaining. The character of Amanda Young, played by Shawnee Smith, appears in what horror franchise? You can see Paige, her fate completely in the hands of the killer. Five, four, Three. All right, I have one more right, Two. please. One more. One, that's his final repeat. For five points in the category of horror, for the win, the character of Amanda Young, played by Shawnee Smith, appears in what horror franchise? Five. Four, three, saw, two. and your winner. Uh, let me stop. Mike the Killer Kalinowski. Oh. So Kalinowski 
pulls Man. it out. I don't know if he had saw in his head right off the bat, if he wanted to think it through a little bit, but if he had to use all that time, you made an excellent point. He didn't use a repeat when he thought he might need one for the let him go answer. He saved them all. That's a weird guy. And now we finally have a winner after three repeats for the five-point question, and it is Mike the Killer Kalinowski. I mean, Mike Kalinowski has been in so many matches. He's played for so many seasons. He does exactly what he needs to do. He knows he needs to hit that five-pointer. Paige for Betty has got to be hurting right now. The three letters are what's standing between her and a win right now. Yeah. But you know what? That's the MTS. That's Friday Night Titans. And this is your winner in the killer. It's a gut punch, and moral victories are a real thing here, especially when you yeah. play for a team called the Fan Favorites. You're a burgeoning personality in the league. And so I think the future is bright for the Boston Badass Paige for Betty because even in defeat, she showed what she is capable of. Yes. Like she said, she beat Ben Baben already. She damn near beat Mike Kalinowski. And so I think that she's got nothing but confidence going forward, especially with a new faction that seems to really appreciate having her. Yeah, and you know, Adam Witt and Paige for Betty can go back to the drawing board, think about what they want next. This is a loss on paper, but as a player, first time in the studio, first time at the wheel, you heard Mike kind of throwing that in her face. You know what? Not bad for her first time out against, again, a Rushmore caliber player. And for Mike Kalinowski now, I I'm not going to say, Mikey, how many belts again yeah, yet, but look, the guy's showing a lot of prowess in singles right now. How far can he take this run? I mean, when you see what he's done so far, the biggest thing is he knows this game in and out, and he's been in so many tough situations. He's never under the gun. He's never nervous. He's never stressed out. He does exactly the right thing in exactly the right moment, and that's why he is who he is. All right, and so we're going to see a little bit more of who he is because he has an exclusive interview as the winner next to Jen Sturger alongside the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney. Jen, it's all yours. That's right. It is all smiles backstage with the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney, and Mike Kalinowski. Mike. Yeah. Let's face it, singles have kind of given you trouble as of late. This win's got to feel pretty amazing right now. Yeah, you know, you know, it is what it is with singles with me. I come in, like I said last season, I was playing with house money. I enjoy playing singles. I didn't end last year like I wanted to, but I started this year on a pretty high note. So, you know, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. But Paige Trebretti, yes. she's got to be making a name for herself at this point, you know. First she took out Bateman. Now she, she put up a really good fight against you. What are your thoughts on her as a competitor? Uh, she's kind of like uh, like a lost member of the Peanuts gang. You know, I, I, there's a lot of them in this in this schmo down here. You got, you know, Linus Schroeder and then Spaghetti Freddy comes in. Uh, I picture her with some, like, sauce on her shirt or something. But she just fits in with the gang. You know, it's the Peanuts gang. You all want to see them together. We've got our own pig pen here at the, at the schmo down. So she fits in nicely. I'm sure we'll stick them in a nice little little group off in the corner, and they can just kind of, you know, do their thing. And they'll come in every now and then, and they'll go off, and we'll laugh at them and have fun with them. It just it elevates everything. We have fun with them. Mike, I didn't want to be like, hey, she made a point calling you an old man, but bringing up peanuts, like, come on, man. <laughs> Shannon, you have to be feeling really good about this performance today, though. Look, today was awesome. Uh, we needed it. It was, it was fun to come out here and just kind of – shed that weight not carry it with us and and Paige put up a great fight I mean and Adam managed her very very well I was I was very impressed with the showing they put on today and uh you know they gave us a little bit of a run for our money but we pulled ahead and we got the win so I'm, I'm very excited about it absolutely now there's so many competitors out there obviously that you could be looking at next and uh oh hi uh hey Jen how are you guys look I'm gonna do something here no one ever thought I'd look who this is Mike yeah Congratulations. Oh, is this? Oh. Are we being serious here? No, I mean it. Well, hold on. Can you hold that for me? Of course. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Look, it was a great showing by you. Thank you. It's been a couple years. You know, since the last time we played, I've won one title, and you've won several. And I, I've I, won a lot. I have, I have to give you the credit that you deserve. I have Thank been you. very vocal in my criticisms of what you've done. But a honestly, bit. man, watching what you did and really thinking about it, this would be fun to do again. Let's, let's call it what it is. This would be fun to do again. You want to do a match? Hey, look, man, I just want to play the best, and you're one of them. I, I don't know if this is a joke or what, but I, all right. Hey, hey, I mean what I say. I'm here to win titles, and I want to play against the players that are hardest to beat. I really want to deserve that gold. You want to come for this gold eventually, too? Hey, look, we're not talking about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but Slow a singles down. match? Maybe 60 days. I don't know. We'll see. But oh, look. yeah, okay, still on that, huh? All right. Yeah. But, yeah, let's play. All right. Okay. Let's set it up. Let's do it. Hey, Shannon, congratulations. Wow, that's weird. Very weird, but um, congratulations, Mike. Um, we're going to see what we can do about this. Guys at the desk, do you guys hear this? 
I'm going to let you <laughs> take this, Andrew. Yes! Your boy showed up. Is it, did you know about this? I didn't, but you know what, Ellis? I could not be happier. Two of the biggest names in the game who have the baddest of blood for half of a decade are now going head-to-head -head once again. Bateman Kalinowski. Whew, I need to get some popcorn and maybe a fifth. I don't know if I trust you, but I trust this. It's going to be a hell of a match. Yeah. I can at least give you that. Your action friend, Ben Bateman, maybe not the best manners when it comes to being respectful in a post-match interview. He comes in and crashes. But whenever the bateman Kalinowski match happens, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on it. And you can bet I'm going to be up here at the desk. I don't know where you're going to be. I you've mean, been I managing. <laughs> you've been parking his car. You've been up here with me. I don't know what the answer is, but I guess – it's more questions than answers at this point. I can't wait to see what Ben Bateman we see. Hopefully he's on the right path now. You know, you saw him and I have a conversation in that post game. I'm trying to send him on the right direction. I'm happy up here. I want him to be happy as well. But you know the killer is going to be coming after him. But that's going to be happening sometime on sometime. Friday Night Titans. We don't know when, which is why you guys got to watch every single week. I hope your son's doing well. He is. In the meantime, who is doing well? That would be Paige for Betty, the Boston Badass, coming up a little short today in the most heartbreaking of fashions. Oh. But I have a feeling she's going to be raring to go and just probably maybe calling somebody else out. You do not want to crash this post-match interview. All competitors, because she will probably want to take you on right now, and i got to get home to a hungry dog. So, Jen, take it away with Paige for Betty and her managers. Yes. I got to say, despite the loss, th there's just a lot of fight left back here backstage uh, with the fan favorites. Uh, Adam, I know you are very displeased with the outcome of this match, but mostly, I'm sure, because of the challenge. Uh, yeah, yeah. It would be it'd be the fact that they asked her the answer to that question, and then she answered that question, but got it wrong. That kind of sticks in my craw, so she would have actually won that match and therefore would have, uh, uh, you know, th this is the thing about the fan favorites. You Make all the rules you want. You're going to have to speak to the fans. They're going to be outraged at this, that this victory was taken from her because the movie is the last action here. This is the biggest travesty in the history of the movie Trivia Schmodown. Oh, I'm sorry. You haven't I'm seen sorry. JTE's spelling. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I meant movie Trivia Schmodown. I didn't mean to confuse you by saying the movie Trivia Schmodown. We got two, we got three rules in the fan favorites, okay? One, we don't talk about the fan favorites. Two, Mike Kalinowski sucks. And What's the third one? I'll think of it. Okay. Just stick on two for a second. Paige, all of that aside, you put on a dominant performance, especially in that Jennifer Connelly category. I got to give it to you there. Tell me what you were feeling going into that round three, knowing that you had just performed the way you had. I was feeling great, honestly. Uh, I had a one little hiccup in round one. I knew the answer, but I just wanted to take a wild guess. But I love my girl Connelly, so I felt pretty good on it when I hit it. But let's be honest. That round three, little decision, three words, and I lose the match when I would have won it if I didn't use those three words, when all I was proclaiming was it's the last action hero. It's a bunch of crap, personally. <sighs> I mean, that's the answer to that question. Did, did playing in the studio affect you at all? I know that this is your first time under the lights and stuff, and I know that some people have said that it's, it's, it's a little more nerve-wracking than playing in digital. I was born to be in the limelights. I made Mike look bad today showing my beautiful face. I mean, let's be honest, who had the better hair today? It was definitely me. Who did the fans want to win today? This one right here. And she did, but she didn't. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, tough loss today, Paige, and I'm sure we'll see much more of the fan favorites. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. the fans are gonna protest this and they're gonna demand that she comes back and play everybody else, everybody in this room, you're all getting played by her. She's gonna take you down. I gotta say, I mean, Things happen, they don't fall you away, but you know what? Big things come in small packages. Right. And Mike knows a thing or two about small packages, so. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the fan favorites. We've been saying it, a tough break for Paige for Betty, but she doesn't seem all that phased. I, I think we, we could throw another match at it right now and she'd be ready to compete. That's the kind of player that she is, and she showed a wide range of knowledge here tonight. I mean, that's the type of player you have to be in the MTS. She's calling out greats of the game because she knows that's the best way to climb to that star power that she deserves. Honestly, she's a great player. She's a great personality. I love what she's doing. And the most important thing, I love that she's unfazed by losing. That's a tough way to go. 
but she is still ready for her next Big match. Big swings here in season nine, and as we say goodnight uh, here, uh, I'm Ellis. I hear music. I, and, and we know whose music it is. <laughs> this is what you get here with Friday Night Titans, and I imagine something is going to be happening through the curtain. Is it going to be a page for Betty? Check. That is, in fact, Roxy Stryer of the stars and that's Nick Harley. Wow, Mr. Irwin is here. Irwin. Well, this is Chandler, yeah. the oh, ghost of Don DePonte. What a collection of ragtag individuals this is. So it appears that this is the stars. Um, they're either taking a selfie for some sort of social media purpose and now they're walking towards the stage. Oh, and again, this. Roxy Star has the microphone once again. Yeah, Andrew, We thought we were stuff. gonna get out of here scot-free. No way, no how. The stars have taken the stage. Uh, everybody at home, you're gonna learn some information alongside Andrew and myself. Buckle up, Miss Stryer. I just wanted to give everybody the privilege of introducing you to greatness. Champion number one, okay. champion number two, okay. and champion number three. He was the first champion of the FCL. That's, that's yeah. very fair. Thank you for remembering that. You're not gonna have to remember that for long because they're gonna all be wearing belts very soon. So you're welcome everybody for these <laughs> champions. <laughs> We said thank you, but uh, Roxy presenting what appears to be a new look for the stars. I gotta say, Ellis, I don't know if I hate or love what the stars are doing right now. I they have do. thrown the whole league upside down. Hate that she gave Chandra the mic. Season after season after season, we've shown you greatness, like my manager just said. But you just don't see it because, let's face it, you're all stupid. <laughs> so, uh, just so we can all put it to your goldfish brain within one season. We're gonna dominate the season, starting with how Ethan just crushed Janine in one of the Friday Night Titans. <laughs> it Ethan? just happened. Uh, Mr. Irwin now with the mic. Rarely speaks. Look, I've already proven myself. I've had the belt twice. I have dominated in three divisions. I'm gonna do it again this year. I hope you guys are ready. I've got an incredible partner, and it's gonna be awesome. A par partner in Nick Teaming Harley. Teaming up with Nick That's Harley. Right. FCL champion. Uh, That's the point. only comment that Mr. Irwin will be making at this time, but allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Slick Nick Harley, and I was the first FCL champion, and soon to be the next team's champion. You know, all of you slack-jawed morons out there are out. Who, who is Ethan Irwin going to be complaining or teaming with? Who's Ethan Irwin's teammate going to be? He picked the best possible option available, and that's me. <laughs> As Mr. Irwin just gave you guys that gift, I want to follow that up and let you know that you'll now need to be scheduling an appointment because... This is officially the appointment. Hey, be hey, named. I and like that. Okay. I am in a very generous mood because I also want to offer a beautiful gift to somebody who actually I used to manage. But I don't know if any of you even remember who he is. And so I'm going to give him the opportunity, this gift this present to come back. Adam Gertler. Wow. <laughs> I've seen you hanging around, I think, with Eric Zipper. Actually, somebody told me you've called him your best friend. It was a little sad, but OK. We'd love to play you guys. So Adam, you're welcome. Come back into the spotlight, honey, and play the appointment. Let's go, boys. Okay, so <laughs> they're leaving. No follow-up questions, I guess, at this time. And so you and I are left to react along with the rest of the Schmodown community to the news that the Stars now have a new team that they're banking on, the appointment. That's Slick Nick Harley and Mr. Irwin, and they have issued a challenge, which I believe will be accepted by Adam Gertler and Eric Z-Man Zipper. I, I guess they're best friends. They seem to get along. I have literally never seen the two of them in the same room, but you know what? If you're getting a match in the league, if you can be on Friday Night Titans, why would they say no? I feel like we do have a 
possible main event brewing. It seems like next week's main event right here on Friday Night Titans is in fact going to be the appointment versus Zipper and Gertler as a team. The challenger, I guess the gift on the table from Stars manager Roxy Stryer. <laughs> kind. Um, this is what you get on Friday Night Titans and we're just trying to run this ship as best we can and steer clear of any more icebergs tonight. Thank you for watching this very informative edition and very entertaining matchups here on Friday Night Titans. That is Andrew Guy. I am Mark Ellis for all of your teams, your managers, your surprises. Christian Harloff, Jen Sturger, and our incredible hardworking crew here at the Skybound Schmodown Studios behind the scenes. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Friday Night Titans. Hey, Ross. Hi, Shannon. <sighs> oh, this is hard. Okay, um, look, I, I need to shoot straight with you here. I see what you're doing. I've been there. And I just think you're going down a really bad path. And, you know, having this venom about you is great. You can, you can win faction championships. You can win belts. And you can be successful. But, but you have to understand what's the cost. Because if you're not paying attention to your players and you're not paying attention to your people, and you lose that loyalty, it's gonna come back to bite you. Okay, I don't know what this is, like what's happening with you this season and just in general, but whatever change of heart you're having, keep it to yourself and out of my space. I'm gonna go win championships and whatever you've got going on has nothing to do with me, sweetheart. Wow. Okay then. <laughs>